Second checking. One. Oh, cool microphone. <laughs> wow. That's a pretty good sound check. I'm going to put this at the front of the episode. I'm Angel Donovan, and this is the Dating Skills Podcast. This is a 14-year ongoing mission to discover the truth about what works in dating, sex, and relationships. To become a better man. Join me as I leave no stone unturned. Chase down every expert, role model, and mentor with insights to get us to that goal as fast as possible. This show is about bringing you the best of that information so that you can take it in and change your life for the better, step by step, episode by episode. Hey there, Angel Donovan with Dating Skills Podcast. Today we're doing a slightly shorter episode, which is more experiential. It's about an experience that I had last week when I went to one of the Tony Robbins seminars called Unleash the Power Within. I went for a few friends, and I've got one of those friends on today, David Tien. You've met him before. He's a great dating coach. He's got a lot of good programs out there. And so in this episode, we talk about why we went to a Tony Robbins seminar. So this is a discussion David and I had after the event, talking about what we got out of it, why it's relevant to dating, sex, and relationships, and what you guys may be able to get out of it if it's something you're interested in. As usual, to get the show notes and all of that stuff, go to datingskillsreview.com forward slash podcast and click on this episode and you got the stuff there. If you want to get the show notes in your inbox every time an episode comes out, just go to datingskillsreview.com forward slash newsletter, pop your email in there and you'll get them every time. Now let's get into this episode. David, good to have you in London. Hey, great to be here, man. Yeah. My first time really exploring the city. It's cool. When you told me that, I was like, wow. He's so well-traveled. I was like, this doesn't I've, make I've sense. I've been here before London. with girls, yeah. and they, I'm always doing girl stuff, which to me is not exploring the city. I've it's, seen all yeah. the shopping malls. I've seen all of the dessert places, um, but I didn't really get to my thing, which is like the more the history, the culture, and the, the rich history and heritage philosophically, literature-wise. It's pretty, yeah, it's been pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. London is, oh, it's, it's got a lot of variety. Savile Row, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, also, you had, did you get your custom shoes? Oh, man. I, mm. Yes, we'll talk about that right, later. We'll about I later. spent way more than I expected, but I'm yeah. very pleased. Cool. So we are going to talk about stuff that's going to help you guys too. Um, so the reason, why are you here, David? Why are you in London? I am in London because on the way back from New York, I stopped through to do Unleash the Power Within right. with, with Tony Robbins. And in New York, the reason I was flying into New York was also to do Unleash the Power Within. So I've walked on fire twice this month. All right. So this is Tony amazing. Robbins' main seminar, his one big kind of like mm. event entry kind of level. But David's now done it. Three times. Yeah. In the past, I don't know, five months. Yeah. And he's getting all his friends to do it too. <laughs> in, three, in three different cities, of course. Right. Uh, yeah, and I'm even contemplating doing it again yeah. in six months or so in another continent. Yeah, and uh, we were talking about earlier, I'm thinking about Henry, the other guy who, who's with us. Uh, we're thinking about sending our families to it as well. And so it obviously made a big impression on us. Today we wanted to talk a bit about like what are the ramifications of all the stuff we did for the dating, sex, relationships world yeah. we talk about often here. So I can think of many things. And first of all, I think what's really important is that the biggest problem with guy the guys have when it comes to dating sex and relationships is actually not really specific to dating sex and relationships it's about change it's about changing themselves and after this experience which kind of blew me away i didn't know what to expect i've listened to tony robbins for years and i like his stuff um i have to say that it was a complete game changer going to the the actual mm. seminar experience it was beyond anything i could have really imagined and it's hard to for us to convey that, but yeah. maybe you'll get a little bit of an idea. Well, if you've it. clicked on this interview and listened to it, you probably are positively predisposed to um, Tony Robbins, but just put this out there, I wasn't. I went to the first one to meet some friends who were going, and they got me this uh, a group package deal, so it was pretty cheap, and um, I happened to be in the same country, so I thought, well, I'll just pop down and meet these guys. There were about 20 of my friends there, and um, that was the main reason. And even during the four-day event, I skipped half of it the first time right. to hang out with these guys who weren't as into it. But they all, if you talk, ask them now, they're, they're willing to put down like five figures again just to do this again. 
But we, the first time, were so skeptical. We thought we were really cool by skipping stuff. Hey, we're going to go see the iPhone 6 launch or whatever. And get You know, totally skipping everything. But even just going to half of it changed my life. And obviously, I went back to it later at my first opportunity um, to do it right. And uh, I totally understand the skepticism. My view of Tony Robbins was he's this guy on infomercials, a little bit sleazy, probably going to try to hypnotize me, <laughs> you know, and uh, try to make me buy more stuff. I think he did hypnotize us. Which he actually did. <laughs> he actually did. But it was amazing. Yeah, but it was amazing. <laughs> and of course, we would think that afterwards. <laughs> yeah. He, so he did a very good job. So um, it was all in something, it was all bringing value. So it changed my life, but I understand if there's any kind of skepticism. It's not what you think it is. Hmm. If, you, if you feel like there could be um, any kind of like sleaziness to it. Yeah, oh, absolutely. It's, it's very surprising on how intense it is and how it really, really gets to you. Like I was taken on an emotional journey in some of the stuff that happens. They call it the Dickens process. It is really, you'll have people screaming in the room. It's a bit difficult to explain here. <laughs> Basically, what he's trying to do is trying to create leverage in you to change things in your life that you want to change, but because of the way your mind is programmed right now, it makes it really difficult. So you have conflicts, you have things holding you back. And obviously, we've been doing the dating stuff for a long time. So uh, I think our primary motivation was you know, for other areas of our life. But I think still I got some dating stuff in terms of quality relationships probably helping to eliminate still some of the, the bad beliefs and things which will undermine my satisfaction because Tony's very focused on like you can do what you want but you have to do something lead a life basically that's going to make you satisfied mm -hmm. and one of the points I just wanted to bring up with the dating world is like he talks about because we had this discussion with you Henry and I because is that the motivations for doing something can sometimes lead to complete non-satisfaction kind of mm -hmm. non-event just like yes. doing it and not getting anywhere Right. Um, versus feeling absolutely amazing because you did get what you want. Right, yes. So on the first day, well, I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're getting to, but one of the areas that this spoke to me was the first day he asked, or you, he led you through an exercise where you ask yourself what were the underlying motivations or that drive you to do things. And for me, it turned out to be, and this is um, from last year, uh, that I discovered that most of my life I was driven to find significance. And then the, the second most important value for me was love and relationships. So what that, the way that cashed out was I was looking for significance by what, how the, my relationships, by how people respond to me in this way and that. And of course, that will set you up for emptiness because you're constantly looking to other people to make you feel significant. And that's just a recipe and formula for disaster. I mean, that's neediness and dependency. And if you're really, really good at that, if you're really good at getting happiness and fulfillment from relationships, it can take you a very long time to realize that that's what's happening. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> you're just really good at getting girls to, to do stuff for you and all that. And um, it did take me several years to see that because I was so good at that. And going to Tony Robbins and confronting that over the months that I was um, going to these different events has led me to reorder these, these values. So that it's, I'm, I'm getting happiness, I'm getting fulfillment, I'm getting peace of mind, security, rootedness, all of these ground being grounded, all of these really healthy things. So my day-to-day -day emotional life is really steady. But I'm also, of course, getting then attraction from people that would be supportive and healthy for my life and my, my, you know, my psychology. Because all of that plays out to support um, the different values. Yeah, that's exactly what I was getting at. And uh, I think my values were the same. Because what, what Tony was asking, I mean, it, and also just to explain, significance is kind of Tony's word for the ego. A lot, right? I don't know sure, how I think yeah, of it, right? right? It's the ego. So if I take some dating examples, like uh, in the pickup artist community, people post lay reports um, often because they want to feel significant to the, the people on the forums. Or they'll tell people, you know, they've slept with 100 girls plus. Or maybe they're even chasing just kind of a quantity goal. I, I want to sleep with 100 women or 200 women or whatever it is. Because of a significance, I just want to be able to tell people that I slept with that many women. And so I kind of like the way Tony put it at the end. He's like, you will be fucking burdened and destroyed. Yeah, I can't remember. It was right. a like, significance for him was the worst, worst thing. Although it can be powerful in terms of driving Achievers. you to achieve. Right, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So I have to say, like, even in my career before, I was kind of driven like that. 
just to say you like you see it in different parts of your life but you'll see it everywhere because that's your main value yeah. um so i certainly suffered from the same thing like significance was a, mm. definitely a motivator for me it helped me to get achievement but at one point i was really unhappy and i couldn't figure it out it took me a while if i'd just gone to a tony robbins seminar at that point it would have probably <laughs> right. been a lot quicker and i would have like figured it out well let's dial it back to to the average guy starting out in dating is looking for t- what to say and what the next step is. So I've, I've opened, now what do I say? Okay, I've transitioned into a conversation. Now what do I say after that? How do I close? How do I physically escalate and all this? They're looking for it step by step by step. And they don't see the big picture. The big picture is how do you see yourself and how do you define yourself in terms of um, who you are? And if you are congruent with who you are, then what to say, how to stand, what kind of voice do you have or all, would all become natural and effortless as a result of figuring out the right definition of who you are. Yeah. And Unleash the Power Within event is this four-day event, which is just to get you deep, deep, deep into who you are, how you define yourself, what your identity is. And once you're clear on that, once you have the reasons for it, and he takes you through some crazy stuff where he takes you back to your childhood and yeah. even earlier, like to your birth, and uh, gets you to think about why you have this drive for significance or for whatever it is that your top values are that are leading you to unhappiness or to feel empty or needing validation. Why do you have this process? And he does it in front of 7,000 people sometimes, and he'll take one individual and, and say, and lead them through that. And you see this, it's incredible. Like your dad did this to you, or like when you were a kid, what, how did you relate to your mom and your mother and father? Who did you love the most? Out of, whose approval did you want the most? Just great questions that lead you to think, about how you became who you are now and how you can change that so that you set yourself up for happiness yeah. and fulfillment. That's, that's a key factor in his approach, actually. He asks questions to get the answers from you. He's not telling yes. you how to live your life or what it's about. He just keeps asking questions. And he does case studies. He'll like, grab someone in the audience. He'll just say, is someone depressed in the room or like some other issue? And then he'll just ask them questions until he gets them to go down a path of their own understanding. So he's really like, he's been doing this for 38 years, so he's obviously right. very good at it. But to get that to come out of the person, it really, I think it, that's, that's kind of the power of what he, what he did and like how I feel like I was impacted because he was getting me to come up with the answers. The fact that it's free four days, oh, we only went to three days uh, yeah. this time because the, the fourth day is about health and stuff. Um, it's a little bit different. But the fact that it's three days, it gives you this time also kind of outside of life to kind of adjust and to think like through the stuff that he's, he's giving you in layers. Because every, every day is like a, a new layer he's adding to your identity to try and figure out. Basically, he's trying to get your best self, right? Yeah, he's trying to like right. try and discover your best self, your identity, and, and that's going to serve you much better in life. Yeah, yeah. And it's a, the experience itself is pretty amazing. It's an immersive experience. When I first heard about the amount of time we'd have to spend there, I thought it was more of like, breaking you down your resistance so that he can make you buy more stuff <laughs> you know so you're there from like 9 a.m until 11 p.m three days in a row or something like that like a long out over 12 hours a day and one of the most amazing things is watching him do it without going off the stage hardly like he might take one pee break on the whole during the whole thing and just never being off he's on the whole time and what it does for you as a person in the audience uh, as a participant is that you don't get to hide behind a lot of excuses because it, what it does is it wears away the bullshit that you, you normally would the defenses you normally would put up to just the questions he's asking like you're saying he's just leading you through this process of questions and he doesn't give you the content so to speak because that's not what you're there for because content you can deliver in many different ways but for this experience it's it's about you and you confronting and dealing honestly with this, these series of questions. Yeah. I think what one of the key things also that's really relevant to you guys is how he gets kind of programs people to take action afterwards. He's really concerned with, once you leave this seminar, are you going to do anything? Am I going to have any impact mm. on your life? Or are you just going to go away? As can happen with seminars sometimes, and you just won't do anything mm. again, right? You won't approach, or you won't, like, you know, you won't do anything that you, you won't study, you won't you take the actions that you need to. So he talks about taking massive action. And one of the ways he did that was creating what he called leverage, which I think is probably one of the most powerful things Mm. I felt because he he makes you at one point in this process on day three, uh, focus on the things that are your beliefs, which are basically undermining your ability to get what you want in life. 
and he makes you focus on that for I don't know how long it was if it, it felt like 20 minutes maybe more maybe it was a lot longer because you don't really know how much time is going going yeah, past almost an hour actually oh okay <laughs> yeah well and so he, it felt like 20 minutes for you right 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 <laughs> i mean honestly like you're doing these 12 hour days and you don't see the time pass yeah, because right. he's getting you engaged the whole time it's it's a life experience it's it's like something special because we hardly even ate we weren't yes. concerned with eating or yeah, anything we were just like so I focused two or three protein bars and that let right. me, got me through till dinner Right, right. Yeah, we had a couple of protein bars and stuff like that. But just to tell you how focused we were, I did see that some people were eating and stuff, and I saw that they were not engaged. And that's kind of a choice. Like you said, the first time you did it, you made this choice of not to engage, to be cool, yeah. and, which is obviously there's a pressure which is often around us. Mm. And I saw it in that room as well. Some people yeah, like, oh, I'm too right. cool for this. But perhaps thanks to your experience, I realized if I don't engage with this, I'm not going to get yeah, right. real value out of it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My error. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That... Saturday afternoon, don't skip it like I did the first time. <laughs> and what it, the whole Dickens thing was actually over four hours. Mm -hmm. um, wow. I surreptitiously recorded it on audio. Uh, and what he'll do is he'll, this is a thing called fractionation. So he'll take you out of state and bring you back in even deeper. So he'll like relieve the tension, then bring you back in deeper. And the guys who understand the importance of what is usually called inner game, this is the best inner game training for any area, dating, wealth, fitness, health Absolutely. that you could have because he talks about um, having enough pain associated with uh, enough pain and pleasure, right? So associated with what you want to do. And if like you're saying leverage, right? What he does mentally for you is to lead you into a, a process where you associate enough pain with the negative results of taking the wrong actions so that you get leverage on yourself to make sure that you don't slack off, you don't go down the wrong path. And he doesn't tell you, like, you feel this bad thing. You do it to yourself. And it's incredible. Yeah, right. And everyone in the room is a lot of, well, not everyone, but a lot of people are crying in the room. They're yeah, it's kind of scary. screaming. It's pretty scary. As a, like, if you think about 7,000 people, he, he does, like, you guys have probably heard of neuro-linguistic programming, right? So he's mm -hmm. using these kinds of techniques. But what he does basically is make, he does what, a lot of the guys who are successful in, in this dating sphere that we know, they hit bottom at one time. I don't know if you hit, I think you hit bottom, right, sure. as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's, hit many that bottom. was the trigger <laughs> that meant that we got better faster than a lot of the other guys who had not been able to get as successful right. as possible. For me, I lost my job and there was a dot-com crash at the same time as a really good job. And then there weren't any other jobs around. My girlfriend dumped me and I was in a new country. I didn't know anyone. Boom. It really made me rethink a lot of things and learning pick up and then dating was one of the things I started to invest my time in. And I had a lot of pain the first time I'd been dumped by a girl. So I had a lot mm. of pain to get over. I really took it badly because I had a big ego actually, kind of funnily enough. Mm. I was like, I can't believe I got dumped by a girl. So I guess you hit some kind yeah. of bottom as well. And in fact, I discovered that um, to achieve success in life, I had to artificially inflate the bottom. So I kind of did it in a sloppy, kind of amateurish way for myself compared to what Tony does one afternoon to you. Um, so for instance, for fitness, I had to look at myself in the mirror and get really pissed and dissatisfied with the way I was. Yeah. I knew that if it was, I could just say, hey, it's okay. And I was, if I just stepped back and looked at it, I was okay. I was like all my friends. But I wanted more. And to, to, know, that I, to know that, I kept, like for instance, I would download all these photos of fitness guys that I wanted to body like. And I just kept looking at them, not in a gay way, but you know, just so that <laughs> right. that would become the norm. So yeah. in other words, I raised my standards mentally. Yeah. That had to be the norm for me. And so every time I looked in the mirror and I was a little bit, I saw all this fat and all this. And for a girl who becomes anorexic, this is a bad thing. Yeah. But for a guy who wants to get to the next level, like I was in fitness, that had to be the way that I had to see myself. Right. And with dating, too, I will often exaggerate the negative to just push myself out of that slump. But that was, like, literally, this would take weeks of agony and just dis kind of dissonance cognitively. And what's amazing is Tony Robbins can, does it for me in, like, an afternoon. <laughs> right. Yeah, I would say this is the least, although it's uncomfortable, but it's in a safe environment and it's very, very fast and, and very mm. intense compared to, you know, the things we did, basically we had to take this pain for a while and it probably like went on for a while for most people um, before we had enough leverage to start, to start taking action. Yes. So you, so you need this leverage, you need this pain. And I think one of the biggest problems is that guys are just avoiding the pain.
altogether right and that's why you never take action because you don't want rejection mm. uh, you don't want to look at why you're not doing it and so on so you know yeah right one of the things he examples he brings up is if so if you guys think about a time or somebody you know who's changed something massively in their lives usually there's a long period preceding that where they're very dissatisfied but not so dissatisfied right. that they're going to change but then there's one event or one incident or one day when they're just like enough enough is enough that's yeah. it i'm gonna change i'm gonna quit smoking i'm gonna quit picking out i'm gonna quit this obesity i'm gonna do mm. something about it and then they change what you can do what tony leads you through in this experience is to speed up that whole process to just make it instant just go yeah. just yeah. do it now yeah. change it now absolutely and tony even has a name for that area you were saying where people are just dissatisfied but they're not feeling enough emotion, negative emotion to want to take action. And that's just like no man's land. He's like, if you're stuck mm, in no man's land, right. you're, not, you're not even living your life, basically. Yeah. And I totally get it, especially having lived the intensity of emotions he gives you, because he also gives you the pleasure side afterwards in, in his yeah. process, which right. is awesome. <laughs> but you really start to magnify why you want what you want. You clarify your goals, you know, whether it's a quality girlfriend or whatever you're looking for, you learn to basically put more emotional power on that. So it motivates you more and you just start taking action. Yeah. So, and, and one other thing that got me to come back to the second event, which was the big step for me. The first time I, I got less than half the content, but one big takeaway was the importance of physiology and how you can use your physio basically use your posture, movements, physical movements, the way you use your like facial expressions, the sound of your voice to change how you feel in the moment, like in an instant. And that made such a big difference in my life that just by getting more energy, yeah. I, got way, I got way more success much easily, much more easily, much faster in so many areas of my life, fitness, money. Well, even with women um, yeah. at that point, like I didn't have to, even if I was super tired on right. two hours of sleep, I could just pop into it and yeah. sexual state transfers immediately, which I usually needed a warm up to get to that point yeah. before. Yeah. And I know in your, in your podcast, you've been emphasizing the importance of the biochemistry, testosterone levels and all that. And a big part of what I see in guys I'm coaching is that their energy levels are low, yeah. especially if they have a day job or 60 hour a week or more job and they're burnt out on the Friday night, they force themselves to go to the club and there's deadness in their eyes. And I can almost immediately detect just by looking at them that they're not gonna turn any women on. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it's not gonna work even if you try. I mean, I've been through that situation myself where I was actually very successful for a while and uh, then I got overstressed with work and I was going out, mm. but really half-heartedly. This, this is when I was in Shanghai for a bit. Of it. And um, yeah, it just wasn't working anymore. But guess what? My head was not in the game at all. I had low energy and um, I was really struggling with that. And I had to learn to re recover and get that energy back before mm. I was able to have my usual results. What was crazy was <clears throat> the month after uh, I took the first uh, UPW, Unleash the Power Within, I was hitting workouts with four hours of sleep, mm. which normally I would never have done. I would need at least the six hours of sleep. Otherwise, I, I might lose, I might burn muscle and I might injure myself. Yeah. But I felt so energetic with four hours sleep just because I, I knew how to take control of my physiology through that three-day event. And I would just pop myself to sleep. I'd make my move, pop back into right. state. And maybe I have like a sip of Bulletproof coffee or something. I might have one of those. And I'm good to go. And I'm like, fuck it. I'll just go to the gym, see what happens. And I crush that fucking workout. Yeah. And then I keep up with it. And... I wouldn't recommend this to guys who haven't done the Tony Robbins event, or even if you have, I, I don't know how, how normal this is, but I still can do that. Um, four hours of sleep, build muscle, burn fat, yeah. and it's just by taking charge of my physiology, which gives it, there's a biofeedback loop to your brain, which then your brain programs the rest of your body, I think, yep, yep. and you're able to process all of your, uh, it'll recover faster and, and all that. So just that alone was worth going for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The energy thing, like, is, is amazing. Like, we were at a three-day event, 12 hours each day, yeah. um, no rest, not eating, and we were just going the yeah. whole time. And you always have to look to people who, who are exactly what you want, right, in life. You're, they're getting exactly the results they want. You look at Tony on the yes. stage, you have never seen someone with so much energy in all your life. He's on the stage 12 hours, he's pumping it, he's in, he's yeah. in his peak state, as he calls it, and he is, and he's high energy. He's controlling a room of 7,000 people. That's not an easy thing to do, and he's just in the zone yeah. the whole time. If you go on YouTube and search for Oprah at the Tony Robbins event, mm. she said she was just going to stay for a couple hours to get enough footage. She stayed for the whole first day, right. walked on the fire, 
And there are times she looks at the camera and says, I don't know how he does it. I'm watching him. He has not stopped talking and he has not come off the stage. You know, I've been to the wash restroom three times already. And that was my experience too. I couldn't believe what he's doing. And just the energy alone, I think a lot of guys who are trying to get good with dating are very cerebral. And they don't appreciate the importance of the physical body and energy especially. When a woman is looking for you, um, when a woman is looking for from you is that energy of not just having fun and good emotion, but also getting it up <laughs> and satisfying right. her sexually yeah. for hours on end. Like, not that you have to do that, but she mm. needs to see that you're able to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, health and energy levels are a huge importance, a huge indicator uh, yeah. for women. And they'll respond to that in the clubs, yeah. even before you're in a relationship or anything. In fact, there's, so you probably cover this in your other podcast, but women can smell <laughs> your testosterone level, Absolutely. especially if they're ovulating, yeah. especially if they're horny, basically, if they're ready to yeah, go. Yeah, then, then they'll, they'll go for the most testosterone guy in the club. Yeah, and that's got nothing to do with what you say, right. with what you wear even, and it, it's just like the pheromones you're emitting. Did you have an experience when, because I, I, I've probably talked about this before on the podcast, but um, I wasn't working out for a time, and in, in, your, in the 2000, mid-2000s or something, I started working out, heavy mm. weights, all this, like, changed things, changed my diet, mm. so got bigger more muscle, yeah. obviously higher testosterone, I fix that too. And I was getting all of these, uh, what we call them proximity kind of alerts. Yeah. Um, basically, I'd be sitting in Starbucks and a girl would come and sit next to me. Yeah. And I noticed this and I was like, this didn't used to happen. And then, you know, you start talking to her and she'd be like, oh, hey, how are you doing? Right. Yeah. And that happened a lot more after I'd kind of fixed my test. I know I'd raised my testosterone. Basically because yes. And yes, um, it, sometimes it's hard because it confounds with the visual effect of having a fit body, but when, you're right, when you work out, you get a decent body, and then you stop going. So your body hasn't really changed, but you just have lower energy. Right. Yeah, you see the difference with the way women react to you. And here's the cool thing I got from Tony Robbins. I started getting really fast same night hookups. So there it is, guys. If you want to you <laughs> get some ONS on a regular basis, go to Tony Robbins. There are also, also some cute girls there. In the oh, there, there were some, and they're, they're intelligent, they're driven. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a great a place crowd. to meet quality girls. Yeah, but so that's an aside. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to get fast sex. Uh, so what I noticed was if I was feeling like 3 a.m., because in Asia, clubs are open until 6, the places I've been, I was going. If you can get yourself into state by commanding your physiology, like you make your move and all that, which he teaches you in the first day. At 4 a.m., if you're wide awake, and your eyes are like, and like so you got, you're, you, right. you're emitting energy. Women just start looking at you, staring at you, dancing up on you, going up and giving you drinks and stuff. And the other guys with me, my, my other coaches, they're looking at me like, and I'm like, dude, go talk to that. You need you to wink. Go talk to that one. Go talk. And they're like, oh, dude, I'm so tired. It's 5 right. a.m. I'm like, right. there's no excuse. So Make then, then, then it becomes an, an, a, like, it's like endurance. You've got endurance. Like, so yes. you've kind of got this competitive advantage at 3 and 4 yeah. in the morning. Because you're you you able your to control wind, your state wind, and your, your energy. Wind. You have no competition. Because all the guys are tired. They're drinking. Um, I was drinking too, but I was still able to command my, my state. And then the thing was, there's so many... There were so many girls. My problem was how to choose which one. <laughs> and I felt bad for the ones who kept looking at me. That I wanted to bring them over and introduce them to my guy friends, but they didn't have Tony Robbins. They didn't have they didn't their have state. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, yeah we, we've been blown away. I mean, uh, you can probably get this from this. We've been blown away by this. I'm, I'm probably going to do some more of them like David has done in the future because I think you also get additional benefits for redoing it because it's an emotional experience. Mm. He's, he's drumming stuff into you the understanding NLP stuff, it's actually going to, if you redo it, like David has done several times, it's got stronger and stronger effects, deeper and deeper effect. Yeah, in fact, after my first event, I was already changing my curriculum in the dating uh, academy. Yeah. So I, I added extra videos to Limitless um, on energy. I added extra video, in fact, an entire program that, uh, on uh, identity and defi def defining right. who you are, being congruent with that, yeah. and, and asking the meaning questions. I knew yeah. about these meaning questions, the meaning exercises, but this was a whole other level of, fight, of going deep into your psychology yeah. and your history. He's the master of change, and I think both of us have got, like, you're putting stuff in your program now, and then you, Limitless is your new main program, yeah. right? I'm doing the same. I'm like thinking in the academy, wow, like I've got to get this stuff in because it's going to help guys, and so I'm, I'm doing the same. I'm thinking, yeah. like, how can I... Take this stuff from Tony Robbins, the master of change, uh, and use some of it to help guys get more results. But you know what we're basically saying, like, this is a really awesome thing to go to. You guys should definitely consider it. It's, I've just, 
it's just under a thousand dollars, I think, yeah. or something like that. Yeah, there are um, different price points. Yeah, but it's totally worth it. I mean, you'll, you'll go away, you'll really feel like you've changed your life, you've t and it's an amazing experience. It's so yeah. much fun, and you get to walk on hot <laughs> coals. Yeah. In fact, well. yeah, oh yeah. And in fact, one other thing I would say, if you're looking at which price point to come in on, mm -hmm. if you can get at the VIP level, so you're not oh, yeah. at the back of the room, because in Dallas especially, I would show up late, because yeah, I was a slacker there, and I would sit in the back of the room, and the energy was totally different. Ah, right. There were people checking their phones, there were mm. people eating in between, like big sandwiches, and it's very distracting, and they weren't into it. Mm. Um, and then you get to, closer to the front, or you, there are certain times during the event where you can go right up to the stage and just like a mosh pit kind of thing. And that is a lot better for your transformation because one of the, one of the lessons he gives is um, that proximity is power. So the people that you associate with, your mentors and your peers will determine who you become. Yeah. And just in this four-day event, if you can associate with the people who are going to, to have the biggest transformations, that will unconsciously affect you at a really, you know, on an unconscious level, but it will take it to the next level much easier. Absolutely. And so it's, it's not even, it's only $100 more, but the point is like most people will like take the slight, the cheaper option. It's the really motivated people that are like going for that slightly, you know, slightly more expensive option, and that's why you're surrounding yourself also with people who are just ten are more driven because they've self-selected to put themselves at the yeah. front and just pay that bit more because they're more interested in yes. developing themselves. So you know that that was a key thing, yeah. and um, I mean, but most of the room was engaged. Maybe, yeah, maybe well, like we were closer to the front. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's true. But it was it's just amazing how how engaged people are, and like I say, it's like a huge party. As yeah, well. Like at yeah. the end of it, it's just it's, such a it's a yeah. life experience. Like I guess that's it. I want to say yeah. don't want to say sound like we're selling it or anything, but it's just been something we've been really excited about. Yeah, go check yeah. it out, man. You'll thank us later. <laughs> Take control of your dating life today. Take one idea or one insight from today's episode and apply it today. Don't wait. Do it today. That's all it takes to change your life, step by step, episode by episode. Learn more about what I, Angel Donovan, and my team do at DatingSkillsReview.com. How we help men like you take control of their dating lives.